and welcome to Thoro Newspaper Analysis, which is presented to you by Lawsico. So these are the two articles that we'll be discussing today. The first is taking on the center. So very recently, the Punjab Legislative uh, Assembly, the Punjab Legislature has passed uh, three bills that are actually more or less in controversy or against uh, the um, farm bills, the four farm bills that were brought by the parliament. So the power of a state legislature to do so has been discussed in this article. Secondly, metrics of world happiness and the Muslims of India. So in this uh, uh, article, basically, uh, the RSS chief has recently and many times it has been reiterated that the Muslims in India are happier than the Muslims in other Muslim dominated or Islam dominated countries. So the uh, a complete analysis of this situation has been made. And even if this fact is true or not. And finally, we have the news and flash column. Before that, let's have a look at the law seeker courses that we have for you. So if you're also preparing for judicial services exam, you can definitely have a look at our Lord of the Courses, which is a very excellent course for the judicial services exam. And the link to this is available in the description box. From the landing page, you can also download free study material. You can also have a look at various other uh, Law Seco courses on the Law Seco web page. With this, let's see that uh, what is the uh, MCQ for the day. Which of the following countries has ranked better than India in World Hunger Index 2020? First, Pakistan. Second, Afghanistan. Third, Rwanda. Or fourth, Nigeria. You know, uh, please keep in mind, uh, the one that has ranked better than India has to be pointed out. So this is the descriptive question for the day. Can state legislature pass a bill in contravention to a parliamentary law? If yes, discuss the limitations and procedure for the same. So this is a very important question. Do uh, you know you should be really prepared with this question? It can be a very uh, potential question to come in the exam. With this, let's start the discussion for the first one, which talks about the states versus the center and the farm laws. So recently, Punjab unanimously passed three bills designed to counter the four controversial controversial farm laws passed by the center. As we know, we have already debated them enough that all, there were the, these four farm laws that were actually passed by the parliament are uh, seeing a lot of discontent and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, repulsion from the people or the farmers and various stakeholders in the, in the field of agriculture. And in that very direction, Punjab Assam Assembly has unanimously passed three bills to actually counter the effect of these controversial farm laws. Basically, it also flags the consequences of not having a wide and informed debate. And uh, the very reason uh, that actually is uh, being discussed here is that while the uh, passing of these four farm laws were taken in, was in ta were taken into uh, consideration, there was no extensive or good uh, length of debate that took place. And it seemed that the decision came in a very hurried manner. And that is why it is um, contended that the real uh, problem of the stakeholders has not been uh, taken into account in these four farm bills. Rajasthan has also decided to follow Punjab, whereas Chhattisgarh is considering to challenge the validity of the central laws in the Supreme Court. So there are different kind of resorts that the states can take in such a uh, situation. So just like uh, there are examples of uh, Punjab and Rajasthan also who are actually passing laws to counter the effect of these uh, parliamentary laws. And there are also states like Ch uh, Chhattisgarh that actually is considering to uh, challenge the validity of the central laws in the Supreme Court. Now let's understand that what is the basis for the bills passed by the Punjab government. 86.2% of farmers own less than five acres of land and majority less than two acres with limited or no access to multiple markets. This uh, will be at a disadvantage and these people will be at a disadvantaged position while negotiating price contracts with private parties. Because obviously if you know you are not such a big name in the market or you are a small uh, stakeholder or you are a small uh, supplier of or a producer of any particular commodity then there is a very high chance that the private parties or the private entities may exploit you to, to even a further extent and that is why they were demanding the msps and that they were protect they should be completely protected by the apmcs this bill therefore makes efforts to buy produce at le at less than msp or that is a minimum selling price Har uh, harassing farmers punishable offense up to three years jail term. So basically these laws uh, that have been passed now by the Punjab assembly actually aim to uh, make the best of the uh, efforts to provide the minimum support pri price and also to uh, check any kind of harassing or harassment of the farmers and to make the, this harassment also a punishable offense with an imprisonment up to, up to three years in jail. 
so this bill also seeks to uh, overturn the center's move to remove the free uh, fee on trade and trade and transactions outside the apmcs which has to be paid but uh, now it will also uh, overturn this decision now the very important thing that we really need to understand here is that are the amendments made by punjab valid that if a law has already been passed by the parliament does the state legislature have the power and the jurisdiction to override or to counter it uh, counter that particular law by means of its states its own state legislature so the center enacted the farm bills by invoking entry 33b of the concurrent list so firstly we need to understand that agriculture as in this part uh, so agriculture hugely uh, it forms a part of the state list and also uh, like uh, but the punjab bill uh, bills note that agriculture is under the legislative domain of the states in the seventh schedule but then also some related issues under entry 33b of the concurrent list also lie in this related uh, or subjects or the issues and the center has actually tried to use this particular entry 33b of the concurrent list to uh, you know to back its power to pass uh, such four farm bills then the, this actually is trade and commerce in production supply and distribution of food stuffs so basically entry 33b of the concurrent list provides for this provision that the trade and commerce in production supply and distribution of food stuffs and that is how it uh, tried to expand the very meaning of this uh, entry to the agriculture as well as the apmcs and the entire system of the um, uh, these mandis and all and that is why it actually tried to bring in these farm bills so the center stretched the entries meaning to include the agriculture now you must be remembering that there is also a concept of the doctrine of colorable legislation so there might be a case of this as well so this has to be seen by the supreme court uh, that uh, how far is the extension and the, of the meaning of this entry 33b is actually allowed so the states can amend central laws enacted under concurrent list so this is very important for us to know that if any law relating to any particular subject that is a part of the concurrent list has been formed by the parliament the states can form or amend these central laws as well if they are a part of this concurrent list but then the part that actually does not coincide with the uh, very provisions given in the central law that has to be assented by the president unless it is not given the uh, assent of the president it would not be considered to be a valid law and just like unlike the other state laws which are actually given assent by the governor but in this case if you have to override any provision of a central law uh, talking about any subject of the concurrent list it has to be ratified and assented by the president so these are the limitations and the procedure that we need to keep in mind and then also the punjab bills uh, they note that agriculture basically is a part of the state list in the seventh schedule and that is why it should be the states that should be given the power to formulate any kinds of laws in this related matter with this let's move towards the second article for the day which talks about world happiness and muslims of india so in this case uh, in, as in this article the rashtriya swamsevak sangh chief that is the rss chief mohan bhagwat has reiterated that indian muslims in india are the happiest muslims in the world so basically this is a contention or a statement that is given every now and then by many people where they claim that the condition or the uh, life or the uh, happiness of the muslims that are indian that is that they live in india or the are the indian muslims is far better than the conditions and happiness of the muslims that actually are living in the muslim dominated countries like pakistan afghanistan iran saudi arabia iraq and kuwait etc but here we need to understand that how much is the uh, re reality in this particular contention and uh, he also like uh, mohan bhagwat he also asserted that the constitution nowhere says only hindus can live in india or that to live in india one has to accept the supremacy of hindus now uh, this needs to be celebrated enough because many a times the very idea of hindutva or having a hindu rashtra for that matter uh, many of these uh, opaque uh, hindu leaders uh, they claim that uh, India is a land of Hinduism and it is only the rightful uh, right of the Hindus to live in the country and all the other religions specifically if we talk about Islam is an outsider religion and it should not be allowed to stay in uh, the country obviously this is a very you know a very blatant contention that is made but still many hindu leaders tend to make this contention and further they say that if at all 
you want to live in uh, our country that is india that is bharat that they many a times they do this debate as well so they you have to actually accept the supremacy of hindus but on the contrary it is very uh, like good to hear that rss chief mohan bhagwat has actually put down both these contentions and said that the constitution equally provides rights to all the people to live happily in the country and one if uh, we, even though uh, at a time it had been an outsider religion still it does not need to accept the supremacy of hindus to live in this country he actually demolished the hindutva theory of muslim rule being exclusively muslim rule so you know uh, this is actually the entire thing that we have already debated and he also cited the battle of haldi ghati wherein it was uh, fought between mughals and rajputs like between maharana pratap uh, and akbar wherein many uh, muslims were a part of uh, the i were actually a part of the army of maharana pratap and they actually fought against a muslim ruler akbar and the army of akbar was also led by another uh, uh, that in uh, rajput who was the uh, man singh mm -hmm. so this is something that uh, nothing to do with religion rather it's just the uh, accommodation that needs to be done but now let's understand that the contention that is actually made by him that the muslims in india are far happier than the muslims in other islam or muslim dominated countries how much truth does it act this does this entire statement hold so why it is is it not true so basically uh, the conclusion can be that this contention is not really true and how can we say so so in the 8th world happiness report 2020 india has ranked 144 out of 153 countries now obviously if you want to talk about the happiness even the muslims of the entire population have been counted under this and thus it amounts that the people at large as well and even if you include muslim population into this are not really happy in terms of in the entire um, parameters that are taken in regard with this uh, world happiness report and india ranks very poorly at 144 out of 153 countries whereas the muslim countries like uae saudi arabia bahrain bangladesh and pakistan they actually fare or the rank far better than india so they are like uae is at at 21 saudi arabia is at 27 so though they are muslim dominated countries still the people over there and that is the muslim dominated population seems to be happier as compared to the people or if we specifically talk about the muslims in our own country india so first thing first second world hunger index 2020 this we've already discussed about it and india has ranked 94th out of 107 countries and if we compare it with other muslim countries again so kuwait and turkey are in top 17 countries tunisia is 23rd rank on uh, 23rd rank saudi arabia again on 35 bangladesh pakistan which are all again muslim dominated countries still rank better than india even in the world hunger index 2020 maybe we have some hope of light in the next one let's see world freedom of press index 2020 again india ranks 142nd out of 180 countries and if compared to other muslim countries bosnia herzegovina herzegovina has ranked 58th kosovo tunisia and malaysia all have ranked better than india in this index as well and finally if we talk about a uh, world justice project rule of law index so india has ranked 69th out of 128 countries and again the muslim uh, dominated countries have ranked better than india so basically happiness is closely related to the rule of law because obviously if rule of law is followed in any country people are tend to uh, be given better justice and thus they are happier and that is why it can be uh, concluded through the happiness as well and in the us commission on international religious freedom as well in 2020 report it again downgraded india's ranking so and we are actually now falling in the category of countries of particular concern and it has stated that the national government used its strengthened parliamentary majority to institute national level policies violating religious free uh, freedom across india specifically for muslims like we can take examples of the nrc the uh, citizenship amendment act and even if we talk about the uh, abrogation of articles 370 and 35a as well so it was like um, more uh, specifically the muslim population was hit badly by these legislations that were brought more or less unit unilaterally by the strength of the parliament and whereas countries such as afghanistan sudan indonesia and egypt have done better in this regard as well in the in the regard of religious freedom as well
so this is very important for us to understand that because facts are quoting something just contrary to what is generally being quoted in our country every now and then so we really need to understand as to what do we mean by happiness and are we really happy in the real sense or not with this let's discuss the news in flash indian meteorological uh, indian meteorological department or the india meteorological department launches guidance system for south asia so the imd has launched the south asia flash flood guidance system to help disaster management team and government formulate time evacuation plans now since we know that due to the very uh, problem of climate change the floods are very frequent and very recently telangana and hyderabad are facing very uh, you know uh, disastrous floods and even the other areas of south asia are also facing a lot of floods in this in this uh, current time so this actually will help the disaster management team and government to formulate time evacuation plans as in uh, timely uh, evacuations can take can be taken place and better planning can be taken place so under the system india bhutan sri lanka bangladesh and nepal will share their hydrological and meteorological data and this will, uh, this is how a coherence can be formed in uh, the, through the data sharing so this was all for today we hope it was a good and inform informative session for you all stay tuned with law seeko for such more sessions to come thank you so much Thank you.